What's going on and welcome to the Solo Shot. My name is Tom Vecchio. We have a 10-game MLB DFS late tonight. Lock is set for 707. As always, this is one of the many shows on the FanDuel Podcast Network. You can find that anywhere, whether it's Apple Podcasts, whether it's Spotify, you name it. Make sure to give it a like, follow, or subscribe. Leave a review. That'd be greatly appreciated. The video version can be found on the FanDuel YouTube page, can be found on FanDuel TV Plus, and, and can be found on FanDuel.com slash watch. You can follow me on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio1. Before we hop into things, snap into action this season the with the NFL here with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com and kick off the NFL season with FanDuel. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL, must be toiling plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. First online real money wager only, $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 100Gambler or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, or Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text Next Step to 53342 in Arizona. Call 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. Call 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana. Call 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghelp.com in Kansas. In Louisiana, call 1-877-770-STOP. Visit mdgamblinghelp.org in Maryland. Visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia. Call 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts. Call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. All right, let's get to today's 10-game slate. Again, lock is set for 707. The note for tonight is that the Coors Field game the Dodgers at the Rockies is not on this slate. Keep that in mind. Uh, you know, if you're expanding, uh, you know, if you're playing a smaller slate or an express slate or a late slate, whatever it might be, it is not on the main slate. So that's the first note. When it comes to weather for today, we're starting to really see some cooler temperatures really across a lot of stadiums. And we're seeing some wind blowing in. Uh, there's also a slight issue for rain. So starting off, Boston, uh, a little bit cooler, a little bit of wind blowing in, still a great hitter's park. We know that. Uh, that is the Rays at Boston. Miami at the New York Mets, a little bit cooler, a little bit of wind blowing in. It's also a great pitcher's park to begin with, so keep that in mind. Chicago at Atlanta, There's there could be a little bit of rain, but Atlanta is one of the parks that's about 80 degrees. It's actually one of the warmer temperatures uh, you know, in play today. So kind of keep that in mind when we're dealing with some parks that are going to be below 60. So Atlanta is sh certainly shaping up surprise, surprise to be a great spot to target for hitting Arizona at Chicago White Sox, a little bit of cooler, a little bit of wind blowing in from center. And then Oakland at Minnesota, again, a little bit of wind blowing in and on the cooler side of things. So, you know, we went from uh, super hot temperatures for several of these stadiums to now starting to see a little bit of wind you know, impacting things and then uh, a little bit cooler temperatures. And again, I think that disparity between Atlanta, which is going to be like 80 degrees compared to some of these other stadiums that are going to be below 60 is an important thing to note. Let's jump right into pitching, starting off up at the top with Kevin Gossman at 11,100 leading the way. Zach Eflin at 10.7, Justin Steele at 10,000, George Kirby at 9.6, Braxton Garrett at 9.4, Bailey Ober at 9,000. That rounds out the pitching options that are above 9K. We are dealing with a lot of solid options, and I, and I think there are a few options that are below 9K, which we'll get to. Gossman is coming off an unbelievable start against the Yankees. He's taking them on again. This game is in uh, Toronto, so keep that in mind. And, you know, frankly, this is what we've seen from Gossman not only this season and, and dating back to last year, but this is realistically what we've seen from him seemingly every time he goes up against the Yankees. So I'm fully on board with Gossman coming in with a 31.4% strikeout rate this season, 7.2% walk rate, 0.96 home runs per nine, and an absolutely awesome 3.31 skill interactive ERA. His Sierra is absolutely awesome. Six, seven innings, eight, nine, 10 strikeouts is what we should be expecting 
from Kevin Gossman today, especially going up against the Yankees. Gossman comes in with a 42.3% ground ball rate and a 46.9% medium contact rate. When it comes to the matchup versus the Yankees, right now with their current active roster versus right-handed pitching, they come with a 24.5% strikeout rate, which is the seventh highest in the league. The Yankees also come in with a 95 WRC+, plus, putting them at 23rd in the league. They do have a 169 team ISO, which is 16th in the league. It's below league average. So they are a below league average offense across the board, and they're striking out at the seventh highest rate versus righties with their current active roster. Gossman is awesome. He has been awesome this season, been awesome for many seasons. I'm expecting much of the same for him tonight. I also think it's important to note for several of these teams as we are down to the final two series for these teams, which teams have clear motivation to win or like need to win. And the Blue Jays are one of those teams as they sit, what are they, uh, barely holding on to a wild card spot by a game and a half right now. Gossman's their best pitcher. This is not a time for him to go 70 pitches, 80 pitches, and they pull him. No, this is the time to trust Gossman, 100 pitches, 7 innings, 8, 9, 10 strikeouts. I think we want to keep motivation for teams as we get to, as we're in the final week. I think we want to keep that front of mind for a lot of these teams. So Kevin Gossman, absolutely at the top of the list tonight when it comes to pitching. Zach Eflin, 10.7 for the Tampa Bay Rays. They are also in a spot where they continuously need to win games. Now, they do have their, I'm going to say their wild card spot is secure. There is an outcome where they win a bunch of games to close out this final week and the Orioles lose a bunch of games and they can take the division. They still need to fight for wins. Going up against Boston, Zach Eflin has been super solid this year across the board. 26.6% strikeout rate, a 3.5% walk rate is so low. Absolutely great to see. Uh, 0.94 home runs per nine. Coming in with a 3.30 skill interactive ERA, mostly a medium contact ground ball pitcher, 49.8% ground ball rate and a 50% medium contact rate. I will still be taking Kevin Gossman ahead of Zach Eflin, although I really do like Zach Eflin in this matchup going up against the Red Sox. I think this is certainly a matchup we can be looking to attack, but on a one-to-one basis, I'm going to take Gossman with that 31% strikeout rate compared to Zach Eflin, who's at 266 not knocking Zach Eflin in any way. Just Gossman is a better pitcher this season. Now we have Justin Steele at 10,000. Steele's been great for like 90% of the season. His last two starts have been an absolute disaster. Six earned runs in each of those two starts. He's now on the road going up against Atlanta. I'm not taking a pitcher against Atlanta. Zero interest in Justin Steele tonight. George Kirby is okay. Don't love the matchup against Houston. I think George Kirby is a good pitcher. I simply don't have a whole lot of interest in him when we've Eflin, when we've Gossman on this sleep. Braxton Garrett is 9.4 for the Miami Marlins. Miami also in a spot where they need to win games. I think Braxton Garrett is a good pitcher. He comes in with a 24% strikeout rate, which is you know just above the league average. A 4.2% walk rate is awesome. 1.04 home runs per nine. And he has a 3.55 Sierra, which is absolutely awesome. He has a 28.1% fly ball rate. That is so, so low. He keeps the ball down. He does not limit damage. Again, it's cooler at City Field. And there's a bit of wind blowing in, as I mentioned. Great boost to, to pitchers in what is already a good pitcher's park. So Braxton Garrett, while I don't think he has as much strikeout upside compared to Eflin or compared to Gossman, absolutely uh, you know, no way I would think that. I really do like his salary, considering we do have Atlanta on tonight's slate. And I like the pitching environment overall. One of the other issues I have with Braxton Garrett would be his length into the game. 91, 91, 92, 73, 90 pitches over his last few starts. He has routinely been a pitcher that does not go past the sixth inning, kind of regardless of where he's at. So... His salary is great. His pitching environment is great. His matchup is great going up against the Mets. I think we can be excited about that right now. The Mets, they come in with a 22.1% strikeout rate versus lefties, which is 15th in the league. They also have a 96 WRC plus with their current active roster versus lefties, which is 22nd in the league. And they have a 160 team ISO for the Mets, which puts them at 17. So it's a below league average offense. It's like all these factors are great for Braxton Garrett. Just that pitch count is the thing like holding me back on being super, super excited about him. I do think he's a really good option, 
But at nine, at nine, he's 94 and 9,000. We have Bailey Ober for Minnesota, who's going up against the Oakland Athletics. Now, this is a better strikeout matchup for Bailey Ober. And we could say that Bailey Ober hasn't had the same level of consistency or is just struggling with a few different things. When he's allowing 1.42 home runs per nine, he has a 23.9% strikeout rate, so it's right in line with Braxton Garrett, but he has a 50% fly ball rate, and he has a 4.09 Sierra. Now, the 4.09 Sierra is not terrible by any means, but it's just not as good as, as Braxton Garrett. The strikeout upside, I want to say, is a little bit in favor of Bailey Ober simply due to the matchup going up against Oakland, who are at 24.6% versus righties with their current active roster, which is the sixth worst in the league. Uh, but the fly balls are a slight issue more for Billy Ober. So a few positives and negatives for each of those pitchers. I also think that Seth Lugo at 8,800 should be in the mix today. He's been good this season. He hasn't been great. The matchup is good. He's on the road for the Padres. They're visiting the uh, Giants. Great pitchers park to begin with. Some good strikeout upside from Seth Lugo. More importantly, I like his salary tonight at 8,800. So Seth Lugo with a 23.3% strikeout rate, 5.8% walk rate is solid. A 3.94 Sierra is really, really interesting, especially when he has a 51.1% medium contact rate and 45.7% ground ball rate. So the home runs, I think, are a little bit high for Seth Lugo, considering how much uh, you know medium contact he induces and how many ground balls he induces. I think the fly the home run rate is a bit too high up at 14 point home run to fly ball ratio, I should say. But 14.2% is a little bit high this year. I expect that to regress. I do like the matchup going up against San Francisco. That's also one of the things. 23.2% strikeout rate versus righties with their current active roster. That's the 12th worst in the league. So we have a, a really strong pitching slate. I guess I should also note Michael King here at $8,600 for the Yankees. Uh, same matchup we saw last week, King and Gossman going head to head. Michael King went seven innings and had 13 strikeouts against the Blue Jays for a total of 61 Fanduel points. I don't expect him to have 61 Fanduel points again. I don't expect him to have 13 strikeouts again. Michael King is a converted reliever to a starter. He came up as a starter. They moved him to the bullpen. And then recently, they brought him back into the starting rotation just because the Yankees are dealing with some injuries. Like Severino's done for the year, all these things. Michael King has a 31.1% strikeout rate, which is no joke. And while that's awesome, I don't expect that rate to continue at this high of a level. And we don't want to be like box score watching and buying into what he did in like just one start. And yeah, seeing seven, eight, nine strikeouts and some of these other starts are great, but we just want to be careful with you know where we're allocating our salary dollars. Frankly, I would I might be going with Bailey Ober with that matchup against Oakland and 9,000 ahead of Michael King at 8,600 going up against the Blue Jays. I just like the matchup against Oakland more than the match against the Blue Jays. I don't think that's too much of a surprise. So Gossman, clear number one, but then you can mix in Eflin, Braxton Garrett, Bailey Ober, Seth Lugo, maybe even Michael King, depending if you want to take a shot, if you don't think he's going to be super popular. All right, so that does it for pitching. Let's get to the stacks on tonight's slate. Again, the Coors Field game is in action today. It's just not on the main slate. So Dodgers, Rockies, not on the main slate. We do have the Braves, as I mentioned. They're at home. It's actually one of the better hitting spots on tonight's slate. It's going to be around 80 there. They're going up against Justin Steele, who has been struggling as of late for Chicago. He looked great for the majority of the season. Not these two most recent starts. So, yes, with the Braves with a, what is a 5.10 implied run total tonight, stack the Braves. Surprise, surprise. I don't think they technically have anything to play for except for, like, best regular season record or whatever it might be, but their offensive upside is very clear. Three other teams we want to be looking at outside of the Braves. The Arizona Diamondbacks. Again, they're at the Chicago White Sox. It is a little bit cooler there, as I mentioned. Arizona, though, is a team that has clear motivation to win. They are tied for the second wild card spot right now with Chicago. Both of those teams are just one game ahead of Miami. So, again, we got the final six games of the season or so, whatever it is, final two series. Some of these teams have varying levels of motivation. Arizona is absolute high-priority motivation. They need to win. Yes, it's cooler in Chicago, but they're going up against Jose Urena, who is simply not a good pitcher. This season, Urena comes in allowing 3.12 home runs per nine, a 15.1% strikeout rate, and a 10.1% 
walk rate this is coming from a 34 inning sample size. Yes, it's a little bit small. If we look back to last year, he had a 97 inning sample size and he allowed over one home run per nine and he's allowed over one home run per nine every year dating back until 2018 when he was at 0.98. He's also, this walk rate at 10.1% is very high, but he's at been at 9.2% walk rate or higher in each of the last four seasons. He's simply not a good pitcher. 5.49 skill interactive ERA, a 42.4% hard contact rate, and a 37.6% fly ball rate. The power upside is clearly there for the Arizona Diamondbacks. And again, clear motivation for them to play. They have, as I mentioned before, I'm going to say five hitters right from the jump that we can be looking to stack. Corbin Carroll, 4,100. 4, Cattell Marte, 3,700. Christian Walker, 3,300. Tommy Pham, 3,200. And Lourdes Gurriel at 3K. The five very clear hitters at the top of their lineup that are one through five that you should realistically be looking to stack. Now, Corbin Carroll, as I've said before, always a player we want to get into our lineups because of that home run, stolen base, multi-bag upside that he brings. You know, a 145 WRC plus in this split, along with the 266 ISO, is awesome. And as I've said before, all five of these hitters, they all have ISOs over 200 in this split, which is great. So Corbin Carroll at 266, Cattell Marte at 221, Christian Walker at 210, Tommy Pham at 213, and Lourdes Gurriel at 229. So they all have plenty of power going up against Jose Urena. Again, they, what is it? Uh, the Diamondbacks have a 5.03 implied run total right behind the Braves. So Diamondbacks, very clear team to be um, stacking on tonight's slide. Again, another team with clear motivation. Then let's run it right back last night with the Texas Rangers. They popped off a couple of home runs last night. It was like a bunch of solo shots. We did nail the Marcus Simeon home run last night and the Jordan Alvarez home run call. Both of those at the end of yesterday's podcast, they both hit. We got to run it right back with Texas. Again, a team that's A, in a good spot, and B, they have clear motivation to keep piling up the wins and secure their division, which they are now, what is it, a game or two ahead of Houston, right? Uh, two and a half games ahead of Houston. So run it right back with the Rangers going up against Reed Detmers for the Los Angeles Angels. Detmers. Sure, he's got some nice strikeout stuff at 26.2%, but the walk rate at 9.1% continues to be an issue for him. He has a 322 Babbitt, which is certainly not good, and allowing 1.21 home runs per nine, along with a 40.6% fly ball rate. And his hard contact rate's up at 36.3%. So a few too many runners on base for free. The Babbitt is higher than the league average, and a 40-plus percent fly ball rate does not necessarily or does shouldn't end well for him when he's going up against a lineup such as the Rangers that have a ton of power. And we saw it on display last night. Again, it was a bunch of uh, solo shots, but we could be saying this, seeing the same thing tonight. And, you know, we're talking about six hitters, right? I have five hitters, six hitters right from the jump. Corey Seager, Adolis Garcia, Marcus Simeon, Josh Young, Evan Carter, Mitch Garver. We all want to be stacking. And yes, their salaries are expensive, especially the top three at 44, 37 and 3,600 for Seager, Garcia, and Simeon. But realistically, this is the spot that we want to be going. I think Texas, again, should be a priority stack tonight, along with Atlanta, along with Arizona, considering that the Coors field game is not on this slate. Looking at Texas to run it right back tonight. Pile up uh, more home runs and more uh, just scoring as they did last night. So going up against Reed Detmer is clearly going to Texas. And then... I'm certainly on board with going to the Rays tonight. I do like their matchup against Tanner Houck. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a little bit cooler in Boston. I, I said that up at the top. Uh, Tanner Houck's an okay pitcher. I'm really not too worried about him. Yes, the, the Rays don't have like 100% motivation to play, but it's still a great hitter's park up at Fenway. And Tanner Houck is just struggling this year, for lack of a better way. 9% walk rate, 21.6% strikeout rate, 1.21 home runs per nine. Certainly not anything we need to be too worried about. And the Rays, they're just a good offense, and they're in a good spot, so I'll be looking to Tampa. I will be saying Tampa is going to be behind Atlanta, Arizona, Texas as options tonight. They, they are you know, further down the list. Could you even put... Oh, could you even put San Diego ahead of them? Sure. If you wanted to take a shot on Houston or Seattle again tonight, I think both of those options, you could make an argument to put them ahead of Tampa. But I'm certainly on board with Tampa. Their salaries are affordable depending on who's in their lineup. 
Yandy Diaz and Randy Rosarena are both listed as day to day. So if they're not in the lineup, it's certainly going to decrease their power a little bit. And I'd be interested in going to the Rays mainly as uh, a secondary stack at that point, or just like a smaller two or three man stack, not a full four man stack. So yeah, I would love to see Diaz and Rosarena in the lineup to stack them alongside, uh, you know, Padaris and whoever makes the top of their lineup. That's what I really want to be seeing. But ultimately, if they're not in there, it'll certainly lessen my interest in the Rays overall. So tonight's slate is looking really strong for pitching. And then I want to say as well, really strong for some of these hitting options. Let's close things out with the dinger calls. I'm uh, going to keep things simple. Christian Walker for Arizona. As I said, love this matchup going up against Jose Urena. All five of those hitters for the Diamondbacks all have ISOs over 200 in the split. I'll certainly take Christian Walker in this spot. And then I'm going to be running it right back with another Texas hitter. This time it's going to be Corey Seager. Yes, this is a lefty-lefty matchup to start, but Corey Seager has been flat-out elite this year, and I'm going to say a borderline MVP candidate. And again, ultimately, once it gets to the Angels' bullpen, it is not something I'm going to be worried about at all. So Christian Walker, Corey Seager for two home runs tonight. All right, so that does it for today's podcast. As always, this is one of the many shows on the FanDuel Podcast Network. You can find that anywhere, whether it's Apple Podcasts, whether it's Spotify, the video version can be found on the FanDuel YouTube page, can be found on FanDuel TV+, Plus, can be found on the on FanDuel.com slash watch. You can follow me on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio1. And until next time, good luck in your contests.